In Cobblemon, you huck balls to catch them all, stay out of harm with a berry farm, and repeatedly wonder why we can't get an official game on this sort of scale. Minecraft and Pokemon are two big things, so it's zero surprise someone wanted to combine them. There is actually another Pokemon-related mod available currently called Pixelmon, but I personally feel like it's the bigger but not better mod. It by no means is bad, but it's really just another Pokemon game since it defaults to peaceful mode. Cobblemon, however, is Minecraft plus Pokemon. The entirety of vanilla Minecraft is available, meaning you can build a base, mine for materials, craft all sorts of goodies, and fight off ways of the undead and whatever. The regular mobs are still in the world, you just can't catch them. Yet. As soon as you start your world, you can pick your starter and head out on your journey. Any of the Pokemon you find on the overworld, you can jump into battle with, and the game uses the Pokemon Showdown system for accurate battles. To expand your party, you will of course need to be ballin', and despite those saying you never will be, the apricorn trees have your back. In various locations, you can come across these trees and harvest those acorny apricots. The mod also gives copper a use, as four apricorns of the same color and one copper will net you some basic Pokeballs. You can make various types with different color combinations and ores so it's smart to set up a farm close to your base. Using bone meal and knocking out the bottom log can even allow you to make rainbow apricorn trees. Your mods themselves have all the actual Pokemon stats that are simple and easy to view inside the classy Cobblemon menu. The natures, the friendship, the ivy, the eevees, all that jazz. You can swap moves whenever you want and the evolves are tied to choosing it rather than it being automatic. So, you know, all the good features from Legends. Speaking of, for catching Pokemon, you have two options, the classic style or the legend style. That's right. My favorite Pokemon mechanic is in this. Ball hucking. I seriously do not know why this excites me so much. Aiming your Pokeball throw just feels a million times better than selecting an option in your menu. Cobblemon even goes a step further, and when you pick the catch option, you still gotta throw and aim the ball. As corny as it is, it's this kind of stuff that just makes me feel more invested in a Pokemon world. The catch rates can kind of be mean early on. Don't expect to snag Mons as easily as ball hucks from Legends, but once you progress in the game a bit and become able to craft quick balls, you can hop into a battle, huck, and laugh at the mods trying to fight against the five times catch rate. Hopefully eventually, like, the Hisuian balls come to the game with Legends catch rates out of battle, or at the very least at the butt blast bat cap bonus. When you do throw the ball though, don't forget to crouch and jump on it to increase catch rate. It's just like holding down B and it totally works. Disclaimer, might not totally work. At your base, you can also build pasture blocks to allow Pokemon to roam around, which made me super happy because I was basically taking up the professor role when playing with my friends, and I kind of wanted it to feel like Oak lab from the anime. It's always nice getting to see your non-main team run around instead of just being stuck in a box for the entirety of the game. Smash cut to the PC features. There is a PC in the game and you can catch tons of mods and swap them out whenever you want because holy wow, the icons are ready and available for movement with simple clicks unlike certain mainline games. How novel. There is however no naming or decoration at the moment and you can't swap names or items in this menu so it still leaves a bit to be desired but but I mean, it's still pretty cool. Playing with friends is a blast too, since you're all in the same Poke world, progressing at the same Poke time. You can build together, adventure together, and just experience the Pokemon together. It's not like Scarlet and Violet, where the visitors are almost like ghosts forced to watch as you move forward. Everyone sees the same Pokemon, you can brag about your catches, trade, and even battle each other. I will say though, Pixelmon is definitely the more complete experience. It has gym battles, NPCs, the entire decks, whereas Cobblemon only has has around 550 and there's no NPCs yet. There also is no Pokedex in Cobblemon, so I had to mostly hunt things down with a list and make my own pseudo decks inside the PC. Even just the classic you've already caught this Mon icon would have been nice. But the mod is only on like version 1.4 at the moment. I'd say the worst part of Cobblemon is probably the lack of battle animations and effects. The battles are accurate, but it's all locked to a menu, so you'll just kind of have two Pokemon awkwardly staring each other down until one of them falls over. Luckily though, Cobblemon is open source, meaning anyone can get in and mod that sucker. The amazing community is always adding more features to the game. Some generate legendary structures, which was amazing because these were very rare. The one I found had me solving a little puzzle and then scaling a mountain. They apparently don't respawn either, so the legendary felt legendary, and I got to brag to my buddies. Other mods just add more Pokemon or custom variants, and then there are missing feature additions like breeding and the ability to mount Pokemon.
for transportation. I've added so many nice quality of life changes. One of the best obviously being shiny notifications. Did I, I think I miscounted. But not only do they have a visual and audio cue unlike some games, but you can even toggle a server notification so you and your friends can panic as you all race to catch it first. Seeing as how it's still a Minecraft mod, if you want to add adventuring and biome mods, you can. Some of them even have integrations with Cobblemon already or with an extra add-on. There's even one that allows your mons to fight alongside you in Minecraft battles. As you may have noticed too, the aesthetics for the Pokemon themselves are amazing. They actually look like they belong in Minecraft. So much work went into the animations and effects. You know, I've often said that we kind of lost something when we moved to 3D models for Pokemon. Sure, sprites were limited, but in every title, you got to see your favorite Mon in a new and unique pose, and it was amazing. Now in mainline, it's more so here's what you've seen, but with a different shader. I kind of got a big wave of nostalgia playing this because it was seeing my favorite Pokemon in a new way, and it was just so exciting and reminiscent of the original titles to me. It's something that honestly has just been lost in the official games now. This feels more akin to what I want from the next Pokemon title than I think we're going to get. I mean, yeah, sure, I don't need to craft armor and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mons, but even if you took out the player combat, just exploring this big world, quickly and actively catching Mons instead of being held hostage by menus, being able to go on a Pokemon journey with friends and building my own sort of Pokemon base instead of just hopping from center to center. Honestly, I can't wait to see what the group does with this mod, and I admittedly wanted to make a video to get more eyes on the project and hopefully get them some extra volunteers or just some cool modders or add-on makers. This is the best Pokemon experience I've had in years and not just because I found a full-odd shiny Joltik. It was, it was destiny.